Welcome, friends. We are gathered here today in large numbers in this packed church in the midst of a devastating Omicron outbreak in order to farewell the face mask. <laughs> Gone before its time in the face of overwhelming health advice, killed off by our false sense of security and public apathy. <laughs> it seems like only two years ago that governments were advising us how wearing a mask was the simplest, cheapest and most effective way of avoiding coronavirus. And although that advice hasn't changed at all, I think we're really all just a bit over it, aren't we? Amen. Amen. I was at the supermarket last week, no one was wearing one. Because we have decided that wearing a bit of cloth on our face is more annoying than hearing about 400 strangers dying every week. In many cases, the answer to this pandemic was right under our noses. Too often, in fact. Hanging right down, doing literally nothing. But safe to say, if our chins had nostrils, we were nailing it. <laughs> but in our pain, we may find solace in the knowledge that the mask died doing what it loved. Being useful until it started hurting our ears and then being chucked in the gutter. Gone to a better place. The ocean, where it's now covering the faces of marine life. But with any loss, we remember the good times. Like when you were ordering a coffee and the barista would pull down their mask to hear you. And the mask will be sorely missed, of course, particularly by anyone who had garlic for lunch or those with a weak chin. But the spirit of the mask will live on in dental technicians and bushrangers. Now the mask was not without its protesters. <laughs> it could be stubborn, it could be ill-fitting, and I don't want to look back with rose-tinted glasses. I mean, they'd be all fogged up for a start. But I think we can all agree that the mask came to symbolise the collective effort we were all prepared to make to protect the most vulnerable, our state premiers. The mask mandates covered their mouths and their asses, but now they want to breathe a little easier and they've sworn to never bring them back. Which is why we're gathered here today. And to the humble face mask, we say we will never forget you. Not like all the times we forgot you when we left the house, then had to run back home and rifle through the dirty laundry and then realise that we'd missed our train. <laughs> Fond of memories indeed. Now please join me as we say a prayer. Dear Lord, please don't get angry at us for pretending that this virus no longer exists. Let it be like homelessness or mullets. We know it's there and we know it's bad, but if we ignore it, maybe it'll go away. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, nostril to nostril. Amen. Amen. And I invite you all now to make the sign of the cough. <coughs> <coughs> the family would like to invite you now to join them in the crowded foyer for a buffet lunch. And don't forget to come back next week when we farewell the seven-day isolation rule. <coughs> <coughs>